As you figured from the title, evolution is our topic today. Because atheists don't like the concept of being held accountable for their actions by God, they endorse the awesome idea of creatures mutating randomly till reaching a suitable state for their environment based on natural selection. In fact, they've been pushing it so much that anyone who exposes them now is called stupid. You've probably also noticed their obsession with the words evolve and develop, even when they have no place in a conversation. So for example, instead of simply saying that bears have fur, they tell you that they evolved fur. Birds don't have a social life, they evolved it. And things could get out of control if they catch you saying that gymnasts train for their stunts. Instead, you should say that they developed them one attempt after the other. But anyway, mom told me that I shouldn't judge anyone before giving them a chance to defend themselves. Let's ask these guys three simple questions and see if they can clear a few issues in their theory. We won't resort to tough ones, like where did matter and life come from, or embarrassing ones like why can't you create a living cell from non-living molecules until now, as this would be too harsh on them. So we'll just stick to evolution itself. The natural order of the food chain has to begin with plants, since they obtain their food from the sun without the need to raven others. Okay. Now imagine that the first algae and diatom suddenly appeared somehow and began to procreate. What should happen after a while? That's right! Oxygen should gradually fill the atmosphere so much that it kills all these plants. But for some weird reason, Mother Nature chose to start the so-called Cambrian explosion at that point, so that plant-eating organisms would absorb the excess oxygen. Hold on a second. Now that we have all those plant-eating animals that reproduce and eat the plants, shouldn't they quickly finish all the veggies and starve to death? Well, yeah, but fortunately, for some other weird reason, Mother Nature made some animal-eating organisms before that happens. So why didn't they finish them? Um, because Mother Nature also designed carnivores in such a way that they're not much stronger than herbivores, so that neither of them would completely wipe the other off. Had predators been a bit faster, they would have eaten all the preys and soon starved to death. And had the preys been a bit faster, no predators would have been able to eat them causing them to take over the whole planet and consume all the green. Actually, for every creature, there is another which feeds on it in what seems to be like an impossible equilibrium. Did all this happen randomly? Let's ignore what I just said for now and assume it was just an accident, okay? It's known that virtually all gendered organisms need a mate with an equal number of chromosomes to breed. A handful of exceptions exist, like the horse and the donkey, but even then, almost all resulting mules are infertile. Now think of the very first 46-chromosomed creature which evolved. Let's assume it was a male, okay? Actually, I think he would have looked a bit creepy, more like this. Now, for this poor guy to become a dad, he needs a similar 46-chromosomed female. But he's the first and only human on Earth, remember? It was a very tiny chance which caused his 48 chromosome parents to give birth to him in the first place. One that's not likely to reoccur for thousands, if not millions of years. By then, if he hadn't died of old age, he would have died of loneliness and depression. That problem isn't confined to the first 46 chromosome creature, of course. The same applies to the first 48 chromosome creature, the first 6 chromosome creature, and even extends to some plants. It's not enough for one nearly impossible coincidence to bring them to life, but a similar coincidence is needed for each and every one of them to bring them a mate at the same time and place, otherwise they'd very soon perish. Let's forget all what's been said. I mean, nature works in mysterious ways, right? What's even more interesting is that some creatures evolve simultaneously. Let's look at some examples. Woodland ants warriors are necessary for the survival of workers which are necessary for the queen and warriors. So which of them was create, um, evolved first? They must have evolved together at the very same time. The crocodile that doesn't devour the plover birds which feed on the remains in its mouth and protect its teeth from decay. How did any of them survive at first without the other when both are hardwired to cooperate? Isn't it also weird that the redmouth grouper fish protects the glass fish from predators in exchange for the exclusive rights to feed on them? Hence the glass fish doesn't try to escape them. They must have came into existence together unless we assume that the newly evolved granddaddy of redmouths at the time negotiated the deal with the already existing glasses, of course. Coming up with proofs for evolution is actually quite easy. First, you find a fossil of an extant species. Next, you find an unextant species which resembles it. And so you announce discovering the missing link. Just don't forget to draw a tree with some funny Latin labels. 
Alternatively, you can construct a human skull with an ape's jaw and put it in the museum for fun and profit, or just fake some comparative diagrams if you're lazy. Instead of answering these puzzles, evolutionists would probably attack us with even more false claims, like Neanderthals weren't fully human, or 99% instead of 95% DNA is common between humans and monkeys. However, they always forget to say that we also share 60% of our DNA with chicken and that 75% of our genes has matches in worms. Yet you don't look like a worm, do you? Organisms have similar DNA simply because they breathe the same air and drink the same water, and also so they can feed on each other. Want empirical evidence? Countless generations of fruit flies have been subjected to radiation for decades in the very unethical Edward Lewis experiment. And all he got was deforms. Not one fly got useful nutrients. In addition to finding preserved insects which never changed over time. Let me ask you. Is it possible for bees to evolve the method of cooking invading hornets with their collective body heat? Is it possible for spiders to evolve a way to flirt using reflected ultraviolet rays and another way for making bubbles to breathe underwater? Mosquitoes develop anesthetic chemicals too, and some plants develop espionage, I guess. Everything around you says there is a supreme creator, but you insist on denying. A problem with one holy book won't change this fact. And which creed he currently wants us to follow is another issue discussed before anyway, but he is there. To conclude, I say it's ironic that evolutionists accuse others of following blind faith when they themselves have no evidence for their beliefs and continue to ignore counter evidences against their theory too. We can safely claim Darwinism to be just another religion out there except that it's too easy to refute and has no divine revelation to back it up. Anyway, until you have some good answers, we'll be waiting.